Hey everybody, I am David and today with the new Logan movie coming out, I thought it would be a nice time to go back and talk about all the X-Men movies. The order, maybe you should watch them in before you go check out Logan, just in case you're interested in knowing what the character has been through. And we're going to add all the X-Men movies and spin-offs to this, because why not? So, let's get through this. So if you are going to watch these movies in chronological order, you probably want to start off with X-Men First Class. Uh, this is the beginning of how the X-Men are formed, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty soft reboot uh, that sort of connects to the original films uh, at the same time, as well as rebooting things. So uh, yeah, th start off with First Class. Next, you want to start off with X-Men Origins Wolverine. This is the beginning of Wolverine's Origins, if you didn't get that from the title. So that's the one that you want to watch next. Next, you want to watch the original X-Men film that was released in 2000. And um, yeah, this is uh, the first installment of the X-Men, but maybe in some ways because Magneto and Xavier are now m much older. Um, that's why you watch this one next. Next, you want to go into X-Men 2, X-Men United. Then you want to go into X-Men The Last Stand, which really isn't The Last Stand, so... Next on the list, you want to go to The Wolverine. This one sends Logan to Japan, where he has to deal with someone from his past who wants his powers so he can live on forever. If you watch the end credits of this scene, it shows that Wolverine is going to factor heavily into the next film. So next you want to start off with X-Men Days of Future Past. And the reason behind it is because the movie takes place in 1973. This is around the same time where Stryker recruits Wolverine and Sabretooth into his little team of mutants uh, back in, around that time. So because of that, because this is a time travel film where Wolverine has to go back in time to 1973, it kind of erases that movie from existence, which means only X-Men First Class is, only, is the only film by this point that's still connected because X-Men First Class takes place in the 1960s, so that one is unaffected, where everything else that comes after taking place during the 70s and onwards are now erased. X-Men Days of Future Past starts all new. Next, you want to move on to X-Men Apocalypse. This is the movie that continues the story from X-Men Days of Future Past. So this is set in the new timeline where new stuff are happening. Maybe certain characters are born a little bit earlier. Maybe some characters are not born yet. You know, you know like Rogue and... Uh, whoever else is in the other X-Men films. Uh, maybe Deadpool is not born yet. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> these timelines are so confusing, I know. But just go with it. Like I said, you don't have to worry about any of the previous films except for X-Men First Class by this point. Next, you might want to check out Deadpool because Deadpool is set in present day. And they even kind of had a, a little reference like... I'm so confused uh, which uh, of, about these timelines, you know, which is a nice little hit to the X-Men continuity. Uh, but I like to think that Deadpool takes place in this current uh, timeline that, uh, that X-Men Days of Future Past created. Finally, we have Logan. Logan is confirmed to take place, I think, in 2029, which takes place after the future events of X-Men Days of Future Past, which was in the year 2023. Um, so that already allows enough leeway for the creators of Logan to tell the story that they want to be. Take place, you know, a couple years after the events of Days of Future Past's future event, where we see all those characters back to life. Well, maybe, you know, a couple years later, things went downhill, which means... The whole idea of X-Men Days of Future Past was for nothing because the future still went to shit. If you watch the movies like this, I, there are some continuity issues. The biggest one for a lot of people probably, you know, certain characters are born at certain times and whatever. But um, I think if you are willing 
to let something slide like why is Magneto and, and Xavier friends again if they became enemies at the end of first class? Well, you know what? Don't worry about it. Some directors had different visions and others wanted to do things their own way, which sometimes it works. I feel that Days of Future Past, X-Men First Class, and even Deadpool are some great examples. And Logan's getting a lot of praise for ignoring some things as well. So if it works for the film... Let them ignore it. Although, that's why the X-Men continuity, universe, whatever, will never be as good as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So with that being said, guys, I'm ending this video here. I hope this helped. If you are interested in doing your own X-Men marathon, that's how I do my marathons whenever I watch my X-Men films. So, until next time, take care.